Why isn't your partner having more sex with you, and what does that have to do with a 10-foot dick? We're going to talk about both of those in this video. But first, I'm Trip Lanier. For over 12 years, I've spent thousands of hours coaching folks to get out of the rat race, become an authority in their field, and make a great living doing the work they were put on this earth to do. And for more than a decade, I've hosted the New Man podcast, which has been downloaded millions of times and can be found on iTunes or Stitcher. Even though most of the work that I do with men is focused on their work in the world, relationships always become a big part of the conversation because what good is our profession if it's not empowering us to feel loved and appreciated at home? And one of the challenges I see many guys dealing with is sex, as in, why am I not having more sex? What can I do to have better sex and more frequent sex? And this is coming from guys who, from the outside, they look like they've got it all together. they got the great job, the great house, the wife, the kids. And yet, sex seems to be an area where they are perpetually frustrated. There's way too many reasons to explore why our partner may not want to have sex with us more often. But for the purposes of this video, I want to talk about one of the essential reasons sex is happening less frequently. And I've got to say, I've got to pretty unconventional practice for dealing with it. I believe in the power of taking responsibility for life experiences, as in if I don't like how things are going, then it's up to me to look at the things I can do to make a change. Blaming and criticizing and bitching about others just isn't going to create a solution. So if some guy's partner isn't wanting to have sex with him, it's up to our guy to ask himself, why would she want to have sex with me? And this is where most men get it wrong and think they need to go buy a cologne or get a new haircut. Um, taking more showers may help, but it doesn't speak to a much deeper concern, which is, how are you penetrating the world? In other words, throughout the day, are you showing up powerfully? Are you speaking up for what you want? Are you owning your physical and mental space? Or are you hiding out and making yourself small? Are you hiding what you want in order to keep the peace. Many of us have learned, have learned to get by and do quite well by simply being, quote, good men. We've learned to be obedient. We've become domesticated. We go with the flow. Hey, whatever you want, babe, sounds good to me. Or the old adage, uh, happy, what is it? happy wife, happy life. This means most of the time we've learned to push down that part of us that takes initiative and owns what, he, what we want. In order to keep the peace or avoid conflict, we deny our ability to speak up for what we want and take the lead. Being forthright, speaking up for ourselves, owning what we want, being a contributor, that's what I mean by penetrating the world. And it doesn't matter how often we go to the gym or how many guns we may own or how much money we have in our bank account. I've seen guys at all levels of success who are playing this, quote, nice guy game. And their sex lives are only one of the casualties. In fact, I've coached guys worth millions who are badasses all day long, but they come home and basically become invisible in their own house. They hide in their work or their phones or television or alcohol or porn. They think they're doing the right thing by staying out of the way. But even though they may be physically in the room, their absence is felt. They're not owning their space. They're not engaging the room. They're not being a contributor. They're not penetrating that part of their world. And by no means am I immune to this. When I'm unconscious or fearful of owning what I want with my wife, I can turn into an, a nine-year-old little shit brat. And in those moments when I've essentially turned into a burden for my wife, another child for her to take, to take care of, it's very easy to see why she wouldn't want to have sex with me. If we're not penetrating the world, then our sex lives are going to reflect this. In caveman terms, if we're walking around the world with a limp dick, then this is going to be reflected in our sex life. And I want to be clear. When I talk about owning power, I'm not talking about domination. I'm not talking about being domineering or looking to overpower others, especially women. In fact, some could say that a desire to dominate is a sign that we're not owning our power in the world enough. That desire to overpower others is a reaction to feeling powerless inside. I'm simply talking about owning who we are and what we want in the world in a healthy, compassionate, and integrated way. Now, we may blame others and say that the world is scared of our power, especially unhealthy masculine power. But most often, we are the ones who are scared of ourselves. We associate power with hurting someone's feelings or being offensive or making someone uncomfortable. And when we're stuck in that fear, we can't see how we actually benefit others when we lead our own lives with compassion and skill. 
we can't see how much our leadership is needed, especially at home and with our families. I firmly believe our world was going to be a much better place when we learn how to be more conscious, responsible, and compassionate with our power. No more hiding, no more dominating. Now, there's a skillful and compassionate and integrated way to be powerful in the world. And, the, and for the last 10 plus years, we've been exploring on the new man what it means to have balls, brains, and heart. So if we're uncomfortable with our power, then how can we practice owning it, especially in a way that it's not going to hurt the people we care about? I don't know where this practice came from. It might have just came to me in a coaching session or it came across it in a David Data workshop, whatever. But I want you to hear me out before you write it off. And I want to be clear that this is not a catch-all for every sex-related challenge. In fact, let's just shift the focus away from sex and your partner for a bit and focus on you, focus on your power. Now, as you go throughout your day, I'm talking about the meetings and the presentations, the conversations with your wife, all of it, I want you to imagine that you have a 10-foot dick. No one else has to know, but I want you to privately imagine that you have a 10-foot dick as you go throughout all of your daily activities, especially the areas where you've been hiding out. Instead of hiding out, I want you to feel the responsibility that this monstrosity brings. Because let's face it, there's no hiding a 10-foot dick. And again, this isn't sexual. It has nothing to do with possessing a penis that's large enough to terrorize Tokyo. It has nothing to do with being more desirable because of your physical prowess. Having this imaginary, enormous dick is a way for us to learn how to stretch and become more comfortable with our own power and energy. Because if we can't be comfortable with our power, then how will anybody else be comfortable with it? And I know what you're thinking. You're saying, Trip, are you freaking serious? Why does it have to be 10 feet? Why can't it be nine feet or eight and a half feet? This practice is meant to disrupt our patterns of hiding behind others. It's meant to push our buttons around power. It's meant to be alarming. And I know it sounds ridiculous, but I'm not joking around. I don't want you to knock it until you try it. And as you try it, notice how you feel. Notice how you respond. Do you act all shy or goofy or timid like a middle school boy? Do you puff yourself up and act all tough like some 80s professional wrestler? Or do you feel the weight, the power, and the responsibility like an adult? And as you work this practice over the coming weeks, here's the thing to keep in mind when it comes to integrating our power. Can you feel that power and still feel compassion for others? Can you, own, can you own that power and still use your brain? Spend a few weeks really dialing this in and then see what impact it has on your work and your, and your relationships and your sex. See how this affects the way you start to see opportunities to show up more and speak up more. There's more to life than simply going with the flow or keeping the peace. And there's more to power than simply dominating others. Here's to you finding ways to be a leader that's both powerful and compassionate. Best to you. Have some fun, and thanks for watching.